مرزا محمد سراج دولہ ایز نون ایز نواب سراج دولہ از دی لاسٹ ٹرو انڈیپینڈنٹ رولر آف بنگال بہار اینڈ اوڈیسا ہز رین واز شارٹ بٹ این ایکسپشنل ون Hello, this is Vaktavar Mahmood. I'm your watching White News. Today, we'll narrate you the story of a Bengali leader who sacrificed laid the foundation of Pakistan in the subcontinent. Yes, I'm mentioning Mirza Muhammad Siraj al-Dawla. Mirza Muhammad Siraj al-Dawla, as known as Nawab Siraj al-Dawla, was the last true independent ruler of Bengal, Bihar, and Narissa. His reign was short, but an exceptional one. On the death of Ali Wardi Khan in 1756, he became the ruler of Bengal at the age of 23. From the very beginning, the shrewd in Bengal was wary of the British people who were increasing their influence under the guise of the trade in Bengal. East India Company had conspiracies against him, of which Nawab became aware. First, the British, without the permission of the Nawab, fortified and raised the walls of the Fort William, Calcutta, in clear violation of the treaties. Secondly, the British gave shelter to some of the officers of the Bengal who were guilty of the embezzlement in the state treasury. Third, the British themselves committed theft in the customs duty of Bengal. Owing to these reasons, an air of rift was created between the Nawab and the British. When the tax and the customs of Asians were caught red-handed and the British began to increase their military strength in Calcutta against the treaties, Nawab Siraj al-Dawla took action against the British in Calcutta in June 1756 and several British prisoners were arrested for violating the law. The British got in touch with the opponents of Nawab. These opponents included Siraj al-Dawla's aunt, Ghaziti Begum, a relative of Siraj al-Dawla, the famous Bengal traitor, Meer Jafar. Meer Jafar was a chief in the army of Nawab Siraj al-Dawla. He was a very wicked person. The battle between Nawab Siraj al-Dawla and Lord Clive took place on 23 June 1757 at Pleasant. On the battlefield, Meer Jafar was the commander of a large part of Nawab's army, but in reality, He was allied with British. Right in the middle of the war, his comrades killed Nawab's loyal commander, was, which no one ever expected. Right then, Mijava withdrew along with his army, and the war was decided in the favor of the British. The British had already bought Nawab's artillery, for which they had spent a considerable sum of the bright money. However, according to the historical traditions, Mijava laid his hands on the Quran. and took an oath of alliance to the Nawab. After the defeat, Nawab moved to Murshidabad and later to Patna. He was hiding in disguise with his wife, Mutfunnesa Begum, and daughter in a monastery at Mir Bana Shah, where he was captured by the soldiers of Mir Jafar. Muhammad Ali Beg martyred the Nawab on the orders of Mir Jafar's son, Mir Miran. According to some traditions, the Nawab was executed by beheading the Nawab Siraj al-Dawla while prostrating during prayer. Nawab's mausoleum is located in Khushbagh, a garden in Murshidabad. The place where Nawab Siraj al-Dawla was martyred was the residence of Mir Jafar, which he was later renamed as Namak Haram Dari by the people. Traitors placed Nawab's body on an elephant and marched it through the streets of Murshidabad to establish before the people that Nawab had been killed.